everybody. This is the Voice of Revival podcast. This is Chad McDonald. I'm excited to bring you a powerful episode on this week's podcast. Before we get started, I want to encourage everybody that's listening to our podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button, whether you're listening on the Charisma Podcasting Network, Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you hit subscribe, give us a five-star rating, leave some comments below, let us know how much this program, like Dr. Lester Summerall used to teach us, has fed your faith and allowed you to starve your doubts to death. Today, I'm going to introduce a very special guest, a powerful man of God is with us today, Prophet Abednego Lufiel. He is the founder of Abednego Lufiel Ministries, an emerging prophetic voice, carries a powerful revelation concerning deliverance and setting the captives free. You can check him out on various social media platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or through, or through his website at www.abednegolufieldministries.com. Today, I'd like to introduce to the podcast, Prophet Lufiel. Welcome to the Voice of Revival. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Amen. You know, I'm going to get started. We're going to get into this program today. And for those that are listening out there, we're going to cover several areas in the, to in the, in the topic of deliverance, being free from demon power, and how to keep your house clean your personal house that not your not necessarily just your home but your spirit man how you can keep it clean from ungodly influences from the outside malevolent world i believe it's a very important broadcast we've got coming up today and i know that you're going to be blessed to get started today prophet could you tell us just a little bit about yourself and specifically how you got involved in deliverance ministry Yes, definitely. Well, right now, I'm currently a, a still a professional basketball player. I come from a family where all my brothers play pro basketball. My dad is a pastor. Um, the deliverance ministry really got exposed to me from my father since I was a child, since I was about five years old. I remember my dad in church always doing deliverance, casting demons out, and even having revival me meetings at home where you would see hear people screaming. And at that age, I never yeah. really understood it. But now that I have grown, I totally understood that my dad was within the deliverance ministry. So it was something so common to me. Everything I teach on, I witnessed it as a child, right? Yeah. So it's been very uh, normal to me now. Yeah, so on on for those that aren't familiar uh, with Prophet Lufield's ministry, um, especially through social media, he's put up a lot of relevant videos, a lot of powerful teachings um, he does a lot of deliverance sessions, even through Zoom online with individuals. Mm. And a lot of his a lot of his videos deal head on with the influence of witchcraft yeah. infiltrating the life of the believer. And so I want to I want to just chat a little bit um, today on this broadcast about nominal Christianity and mixture in the life of the believer. You know, I'll never forget the very first time I ever went to the Republic of Chad. Mm -hmm. I was I was invited to come there and minister. We did a powerful crusade in the capital city of Jemina. But before I went there, um, you know, that nation is, is in the Sahel region of Africa. You know, in Libya borders to the north. There's a lot of desert and, and things like that. And before I came, he he said to me, he said, "Do you know, my brother, the number one problem?" with the church in my nation. Now, at that time, I, I thought perhaps maybe the answer was going to be Islamic persecution, you know, um, ISIS or, or some of those type of groups that are active in that nation, specifically in the north three quarters of that country. I thought that would be the answer. It would be, would be the horrible persecution that our brothers go through on a regular basis there. He said, no, brother. He said, the number one problem that faces the church in my nation is not Islamic persecution. It's nominal Christianity. When he said that to me, I said, my brother, I said, that's the number one problem that faces the church in our nation, nominal Christianity. And, and that nominal Christianity allows us many times to, to, to receive and willfully invite influence, not just from the world into our lives, but from the other world into yep. our lives. And so talk to us a little bit about what you've seen when it comes to witchcraft being mixed into the lives of the believer. Um, maybe talk to us about some indicators that there may be some witchcraft in the life of the believer. 
Yeah, so growing up, you know, having an uncle that used to be in the occult, he actually sold himself to Satan. Um, now he's a huge deliverance minister in uh, Dallas, Texas, Texas, I believe. Growing up, I've seen a lot of um, ministers that operate with power. I remember yeah. when I was young uh, and really desperate, I used to go online and to reach out to anyone that had a prophetic voice, anyone that had power or could prophesy accurately. And there were types of people that I would tap into or I would get involved with that were operating in another source of power, right? With another source of power where they had the ability to give, give me information, but the information brought confusion, yeah. right? The information was accurate about my past, but they would tell me to do certain things that weren't biblical. Right. But they had the power and they had the, the, the ability to do things and say things, but they're operating in witchcraft. And I think one of the ways that I found out that a particular man that um, uh, who was involved in witchcraft that had the ability to prophesy was uh, I brought a family member, even my wife, through deliverance from a, a false prophet, a false prophet in Toronto. Yeah. And he, he actually spoke out of my. My, my wife and my, my my other family member, but it was the familiar spirit speaking out saying, mm -hmm. my name is Pastor this. So that's when I truly realized that there are people that will preach Jesus, people that will even have um, a counterfeit gifts of mm -hmm. uh, fruit of the spirit, but be operating yeah. under a counterfeit power behind the scenes. And a lot of people think deception is all about people saying, I'm a witch or yeah. you know, just dabbling in new age, but there are people that are literally uh, they will preach Jesus, but they won't preach the fullness of it. Yeah. And they will take scripture out of context. And this is what we call false prophets who are also operating witchcraft. You know, that's, you know, what you just said, I think is important because you said they preach Jesus. There's mm -hmm. a false concept that a lot of people have here in the West for sure. Mm -hmm. And that is, well, you know, the Bible says no man can say Jesus is accursed you know, unless they're not speaking by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So if you say that you're not speaking by the spirit of God, but no one can say Jesus is Lord, but by the spirit of God. And so they say, well, they said that Jesus was Lord. They preached Jesus. Mm -hmm. So how can they be wrong? I think where they, they, they misunderstand, you know, the context of that scripture, because, G, because the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, the apostles tell us and teach us about the spirit of antichrist. And Jesus said there would be those that would come in my name Sorry. that would say, here is Christ. You can't come in his name if you're not willing to say his name. Yep. And so they think that just because it looks Christian, looks churchy, or they preach Jesus, that everything is good. And, and, and you have to be able to discern the spirit and who's ultimately being glorified behind the thing. And and, and I, so what you said, I, I think, is really powerful of those listening. It's important to discern, you know, not get mesmerized in the fact that somebody's operating in signs and wonders mm. and, and those things, because those are all powerful. Those are all good. We, they should be operating in the life of the believer on a regular basis. Mm. But as you know, as I know, and we could probably blow people's mind of, of the types of wonders that can be wrought through witchcraft yep. you know i mean i i i mean I, it would blow the minds of my listeners if i shared with them some of the things we have to remember that this the, the enemy is a counterfeit so yep. anything he thinks he can produce god's power is greater you know it reminds me you know when moses confronted the, the magicians of egypt mm -hmm. they were able to replicate some of the miracles until a certain point. And it wasn't a shock to Moses that they could do that. And so we have to understand that if you're not rooted and grounded in sound doctrine, it's possible to be deceived. And so talk to us wow. a little bit about that, how, how somebody, somebody who was perhaps invited in witchcraft into their life, because I know I see, uh, you know, Today in the West, they're Christians. They're involving themselves in all kinds of things. You know, they some of them have got spirit spouses, or they've got um, they're involved in immoral moral practices. They, you know, they're burning sage, and they're still going to church. They're, you know, uh, per participating with spirit catchers and 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 tarot cards and 
you know, all these different type of activities um, in the life of the, of the individual that claims to be a believer. Um, talk with us a little bit about the dangers of some of that. So, you know, in a, I think it's a book of Deuteronomy that the Lord actually speaks out against those who uh, practice divination, sorcery, and everything of that nature, or goes to mediums. And the book of Chronicles, the Bible also tells us that Saul died because he inquired of a mm -hmm. sorcerer, which means he began to merge in other powers, other entities, other things with uh, the truth of, of God, right? So yeah. uh, with people that engage into new age, witchcraft, burning sage, tarot cards, they're actually opening them, themselves up to the demonic realm right they're tapping into a source that is illegal and then they will now uh, begin to invite spirits that will begin to destroy mm -hmm. their lives and one thing i love to say on tiktok is this when you begin to tap into an object or thing that you believe it has the spiritual power to cause change shift and affect you're actually inviting a demon power a demon spirit right with the name of jesus we can cast out demons and cleanse the air by the power of the holy spirit but we do not need to begin to inquire of indigenous practices of spiritualism and the wind and things of that nature mm -hmm. because it's witchcraft and you know it is it is synchronism right it is synchronism where you believe that you can tap into all these religions and rituals and inquire of the dead and things of that nature and it is demonizing a lot of people within the church because there are a lot of christians that think it's okay to do tarot cards crystals yeah. burning sage when it is full blown out witchcraft and it's destroying mm -hmm. a lot of people's lives and they keep coming for deliverance when the legal right is in the object in their home yeah you know um i was contacted once by a young lady she'd reached out to me a couple of years ago about a dream that she had had and in that dream, she told me the dream and she said, I was having this dream and in the dream, I saw an, an unseen force grab me by my leg and it drug me back to the home I grew up in as a child. Wow. And I recognized that as a demon in the dream and it was dragging me. I was afraid it was dragging me to my home as a child and I woke up and, and she said, I, I don't understand why I'm having this dream. As soon as she shared it with me, the spirit of the Lord gave me the revelation of the dream. And I said, you're being drugged back to the home of your childhood because that spirit is coming back to stake a claim mm. in your life of something that you did when you were a child in that home. It's now coming, it, coming to claim its right in your life. Mm. And so it's trying to pull you back to that. And so I said, what happened in that home? She said, when I was a young girl, young teenager, because she was a she was an adult at this time. She contacted me. She said, I was a young teenager. She said, some girlfriends and I got together in the house and we play with a Ouija board. And as we play with that Ouija board, um, we started to inquire of it. And all of a sudden, um, a sound happened in the house and the chandelier started shaking. And we, we got scared and we stopped messing with it, put the board away and walked. And as we walked away, it broke and it fell. And it missed everyone, but it frightened them so bad. They got rid of it. They said they never touched it again. Mm -hmm. I said, you may have never touched it again, but you opened up the door and allowed a legal right to be placed into your life. I said, so now it's coming back to stake its claim. You've got to renounce that and break it off. Um, so I led her, helped her to do that. And she never had another problem ever again since. Um, talk a little bit about how important it is to break off any any legal rights any and close any doors that we may have opened in our life yeah it's the biggest thing you know mm -hmm. uh you know my ministry um especially in the past year when i started the online portion of it um when i begin to pray for people and demons would manifest the, the number one thing that demons would say is i belong here she's mine mm -hmm. she allowed me to come in and enter as a child and enter through sexual yeah. morality so this means that they have entered through a, a, a act of disobedience from the person. So the person now has invited them because of the lust of the flesh, because of dabbling to witchcraft, because of a various amount of things, right? So the demons actually believe they have a legal right to enter the body, right? So um, breaking legal rights and renouncing is basically telling the demons that you no longer have access to my body and I will no longer serve two masters. I'm no longer being lukewarm. I'm serving Jesus. I want nothing to do with you. 
and they yeah. legally have to uh, let go of you. Now, the process of deliverance might be vigorous, it might be intense, you might vomit a little bit, but mm -hmm. the legal right is no longer there anymore. So the deliverance will be more swiftly. But there yeah. are many people that are actually not yeah. ready to turn away from them, turn away from their sins. So they'll never actually be totally set free. You'll just be in a continual cycle, a continual yeah. cycle of manifestations. You know, I, I think that that's also sometimes the case why some people never get healed, yep. why they never get their breakthrough with God. Um, I was preaching one time in Haiti, and it's a place that we go regularly. And and I was preaching. We were doing a um, evangelistic crusade um, out in a city called Mirambale, and I was preaching. And a lady came, a, a young, well, she wasn't young, but a, a mother came to me for prayer, and when she came to me for prayer, she hiked up the bottom part of her, of her skirt, not being immodest or anything, but just showing me her knee area. Mm -hmm. And she had this festering sore and this problem with her leg she needed healing from. And she said, um, I need healing in this spot of my leg. She said, I've been to the witch doctor mm -hmm. and he couldn't, he can't, he couldn't fix it. So I want God to heal me. And I looked at her and I said, I said, um, mother i said are you a, a member of this church and she was like yeah i go to church here i said what are you doing going to the voodoo priest and so it made me angry in the spirit and i said to myself i blame the pastor at this point mm -hmm. because how can you have people coming to your church it's one thing for someone outside of the church mm -hmm. not converted to be dabbling in these practices and not know any better Mm -hmm. But someone who has come to Christ and is supposed to have renounced these things, yet they return to those kind of practices. I said, ma'am, you won't be healed. You will not be healed unless you repent, yep. you renounce it, and you refuse to go back. If you do, Jesus will heal your leg. Mm -hmm. But if you do not, it will not be healed. And, and, I've, and it's not just there that I've seen that kind of activity. I mean, it, it's here as well. It's yep. not always as overt, but people are still dabbling in things and in practices, trying to affect an answer that needs to come from God. Yep. And I see that a lot, you know, a lot in Africa and in places that I travel. Many times, you know, they'll be they'll go to the witch doctor through the week, they'll come to the crusade, and mm -hmm. you know, they'll be delivered of demons, and then three days later have to be delivered again. Because they're going right back to the witch doctor. If they don't repent, get set free, you cannot serve two masters. Oh. You know, and that, you know, that's a, you know, when we, when we, when I give you, give the listeners stories and examples like that, um, those may be grand examples to hear. But in the life of the, of the individual believer, even here in the West, the slightest compromise, the slightest invitation, you know, of the things of the, of the underworld will wreck your life in every area. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, honestly, you know, when we begin to, there's a lot of people that will begin to inquire of, you know, traditional healers or um, people that operate in the occult, witch doctors, because yeah. they are looking for change. Their life, what they're going through, their finances is not going the way they want to. They feel stagnated and delayed. So they begin to tap into a source, an entity, a person and say, I need help. And usually within these, the, in these encounters, there's a transaction that has to take place. You might have to go get a bag of rice or some yeah. type of food, or some type of sacrifice or give money. But the moment you now begin, you give those belongings to the person, you are now caught. And this is what is a legal right. And especially there's a woman I prayed for that said, um, I want money. Like I'm struggling financially. And the witch doctor said to her, bring me your money, bring me your credit card. And when she did that, there was a transaction and there was a hole, there was a legal right on her finances. And from that day forth, poverty followed her wherever she went. Even her yeah. children begin to suffer financially because there has been a transaction in the spirit illegally. These are illegal transactions in the spirit. And she began to suffer because the enemy can never bless you, but he will bring counterfeit blessings. Yeah. And uh, it, the problem with a lot of believers today is that, especially in the church, is that they do not have the understanding of the occult. And we see in scriptures that Apostle Paul, the disciples, even Jesus would expose the occult 
uh, talk about the occult, talk about uh, false prophets. Revelation 2 verse 2 talks about that there will be false apostles yep. that will be exposed and we will find them to be find them to be false. Matthew 24 talks about false prophets and everything in that, that nature. The Bible talks about uh, the Antichrist will come and perform lying signs and wonders, which means that he will perform signs and wonders, but it will be counterfeit, which means it will yeah. not bless you. It will show a form of power you might manifest. You might cough up you might receive something temporary you might he might be able to give you a million dollars but it, it comes for your soul at the end and it comes with a price it comes with demonization it comes with mental warfare you may you may get the you may get that material thing but your mind will be oppressed your body will be oppressed and filled with demons this is the problem with a lot of believers today is they tap into powers because they're looking for change and not jesus you know something you just said reminds me because when we're talking about people operating through false signs and wonders and power, be, because they appear to be conducting deliverance many mm -hmm. times, people assume that they're from God. Mm -hmm. But what they don't understand is people, and you know this, people go to the witch doctor for deliverance. 100%. And they'll do deliverance uh, rituals on them, and it will appear that they've been delivered mm -hmm. at first. And all that's happening is a weaker demon is being driven out by a stronger demon. Yep. And so they may be, they may look okay, appear okay for a short while, but those spirits will manifest and their life will be worse yep. than the end. And, you know, when it comes to um, an individual who appears to be conducting deliverance, you have to make sure they're operating by the spirit of God. Yes. And, and so, you know, when you just brought that up, I think that's important for the listeners to understand and 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 to adhere to. But this whole issue of of mixture in the life of a believer, I think, is you know, listen, if you're listening to the Voice of Revival, you listen to this podcast, whatever medium you're listening to, make sure you are not entertaining the enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, Ouija boards, tarot cards, spirit catchers, um, movies that glorify the occult. Yep. You know, stop watching that garbage. Stop watching it and allowing it into your home. You know, I get called a holiness preacher. I'm legalistic because I, I preach against this kind of stuff. I'm not legalistic. You're just rebellious. That's what I tell them. <laughs> you know, yep. these these folk, if, I think if some people spent more time trying to justify, if they spent spent less time trying to justify their carnality and spent more time trying to see how they could advance the kingdom of God, it would be amazing what they could do. 100. And, and so <clears throat> talk a little bit about, you know, we've got a little bit of time here. Um, I want to talk, if we can get into it a little bit, on marine spirits. Mm. And how do marine spirits affect the lives of individuals? So... Marine spirits, you know, I say they're the most evil spirits. All evils, all spirits are evil, but marine spirits are the are the number one spirits that oppress mankind. We know that the world is seventy percent water, right? So marine spirits really invade people through sexual sin, right? And they invade you through sexual sin, but that is just the open door. But when marine spirits enter, they now begin to oppress your finances. They'll begin to bring bareness in your room womb they'll cause irregular cycles for women in their period they'll begin to uh create create havoc in your marriage they'll prevent people from getting married so, so many things with marine spirits that uh it, it is just demoralizing it is just a terrible thing to think about because there are so many people that are living in sexual sin and they have a spirit husband or spirit wife which are marine spirits that begin to oppress everything that you have here in the, in the earth realm and there's a revelation i want to give to some people here is that yeah. when you have a spirit husband or a spirit wife you are it's like you are married to them in the spirit they become yours so in real life in this physical world when you're married to your spouse you now own 50% of what they have. So it's the same thing within the spirit. So when you have a spirit spouse, they now begin to own what you have physically in the earth realm. So they now begin to frustrate your finances, frustrate your marriage, frustrate your health. And until you get deliverance and stop living in sexual immorality, your life, your assets will begin to be under the power of the marine kingdom. And this is why I've done a lot of deliverance and 
marine kingdom spirits are speaking out and saying i don't want to let go of her finances i'm holding her destiny i'm attacking her marriage i I won't allow her to be uh married i tied up her womb just so many things that are going on so marine spirits are destroying a lot of people because of masturbation pornography Mm -hmm. premarital sex and a lot of other things yeah um when it comes to the that area i think um they they use soul ties Mm -hmm. as a part of their um hold on the legal right yes and i think that that's why a lot of if you're listening in europe and you're a lady and not necessarily just women but women seem to be afflicted in this area more when it comes to a soul tie of of past individuals Mm -hmm. you know you'll run into women and they'll make a statement like this i can never seem to get a good man I'm always attracted to, you know, I, I get a man that treats me right, treats me, you know, wonderful. And I end up leaving him, running away from him for a horrible individual. I know I have no, no business being around and I keep being drawn to, to the, to the person you keep being drawn to someone that abuses you. You keep being drawn to someone that manipulates you. The reason that you're drawn to that is because you have a soul tie, not with just that person, but the spirit spirits that are attached to them and so you've you've got a covenant that's been made through your sexual relations with them in the past and so now you're attracted to people that carry those spirits and so that's why you can't you can't get along you know with quote the good person you're drawn to that because of those those soul ties that need to be broken off um let's talk a little bit about soul ties if you don't mind Yes, yeah, soul ties, it's, it's really a binding, especially it's a binding of one person's soul to another person's soul. So a great picture of that is try to get two cardboard boxes and putting glue on them, sticking them together and try to peel it off. There will be yeah. pieces of the other cardboard stuck on the other person. So like you said, there has been a lot of women that come to me and saying, and they're, and they're saying, man, I just, every relationship I get to, it doesn't work. Every marriage I get into, this is divorce. There's things that are just not yeah. working. And I always find out with within the within the their 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 message or within their concern is this that they are living in sin, or they're yeah. sleeping with that person, or they have a crazy sexual past where they begin to now have soul ties not only with the individuals in the past but you also have soul ties with demons so when you live in sin and you create a soul tie with the person from premarital sex you also get a soul tie from the marine kingdom Mm -hmm. right and then now you'll only be attracted to people that project uh or will be in agreement with the spirit you have a soul tie with so it doesn't matter where you go and what you do, you'll always be attracted to those people. And soul ties are completely demonic. And I see myself doing a lot of deliverance on soul ties. There's a lot of people, yeah. well, women, especially women, they sleep at night when they're having sexual dreams, being raped and molested, yeah. uh, molested waking up with bruises and, and uh, cuts on their body. It's because they have a soul tie with the spirit that is engaging mm-hmm. them in the night season. And it's the most demoralizing thing. And a lot of men and women need, need deliverance from soul ties before they get married, or else it's gonna cause a lot of destruction. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you've got a book that you just wrote. It just came out a, a few months ago, I believe, Casting Out Devils or Casting Out Demons, yes, The right. Ultimate Equipping for Deliverance. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that book um, what's in that book and what went into you writing that book? So I really wrote that book because, you know, there have been a lot of people that ask me a lot of questions. How can I get free? Things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So I really broke it down chapter to chapter. I really talked about legal rights, how demons enter, how people should pray, because there are a lot of Christians in the church that do not know how to conduct self-deliverance or they do not know how to break legal rights or they do not know how to go about deliverance because the church they go to is spiritually dead and does not quit them or teach teach them anything so this book was for those believers because i get about hundreds and hundreds of requests requests for deliverance all the time so this book um you know I, i created i wrote it so people could have access to truth people should can have access to biblical principles that will set them free. You don't always need to go to the prophet, the apostle, the evangelist, the pastor for prayer. You can actually begin to now begin to go through the list and renounce things and find out what the legal right is and understand that, hey, this could be the thing that could set you free right now in this moment. A lot of people do not have that understanding. And I really call out sin in that book. And I think that's the biggest thing within the church and deliverance is that people continually 
live in sin. So that book is just the ultimate equipping because it's just everything jam-packed about deliverance because mm -hmm. a lot of people think Christians can't have demons. So I just jam-packed that book with everything that is biblical and yeah. everything every believer needs to know for deliverance. Yeah, I, I run into that a lot and they don't believe that Christians can have demons. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, let me tell you this, I've probably cast out more demons out of Christians than unbelievers. And 100%. when, <laughs> when, um, when, um, here's the deal. When someone comes to me for prayer or for deliverance and they start manifesting, okay. I don't stop and be like, oh, well, wait a minute. You're a believer. You, how can you have a demon? I cast it out. Yep. And mm -hmm. so, you know, for those of you that are listening, you know, I liken it to this. And in one of my books, I used this illustration on this very same that same topic, you know, I remember there was a report I read, I believe it was somewhere in the United Kingdom, but an individual had bought a home and the man and the family buys this home and they move into this house. And after living there for a while, they would leave and they would go places and they would come back and things would be disturbed in the house. Like things weren't placed where they had had them before. They were hearing some different sounds and things had been moved and they were trying to figure out what had happened in this house. And finally, they were doing some renovation. And one day doing the renovations, they found that up in the upstairs attic area, there was a, 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 a wall. And behind the wall, there was this room. And they realized that there was a squatter had been living in that room for years. Wow. And they never knew they had an occupant in that home. Now, this family bought the home, owned the home, occupied the home. But there was a room that they didn't know that was in that home that had been occupied by an individual that had never been cleaned out. And oftentimes, that's the case with the believer. You know, mm -hmm. the vastness of the human soul, I don't think we ever comprehend fully. And, and so what happens is we don't fully cleanse out every area of our soul. And sometimes it's not cleansed out because of things that we're doing and inviting in. And other th areas, it's we need to we need to root it out. That's why you know sanctification is so important, and the consecrated life is important. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm glad you brought that up and talked about that for a little bit. Um, let's talk about how somebody gets free. Okay, so you know someone that's I feel like there's people that are listening that are being afflicted by marine spirits, by soul ties in their life. Talk, talk to the listeners a little bit about how they get free if they are afflicted by this. You know, the first thing, you know, the Bible talks about, there, you know, there's no forgiveness without repentance. The number one way to truly start your process of freedom is to turn away from the sin, right? So when you turn away from the sin, now you begin to break legal rights. And when you have done that process, now there will be a process of deliverance dependent upon the severity of your demonization someone can get totally set free on the spot and there will be some people that it might take a few sessions because they're so filled with demonic powers and i've realized you know chad that a lot of people become disappointed because of their yeah. process of deliverance so like why is it taking a week why is it taking this long why have i been prayed for three three times and not being set free yeah there could be so many variables within this it could be because you're living in sin you don't really have a prayer life you don't fast it could be that mm -hmm. you know your deliverance portion is just way more intense because you're so demonized right so mm -hmm. i would say to a lot of people to continually to fast to pray and yeah. to turn away from the thing that is oppressing you because every time you manifest it's a form you're going through deliverance so don't even yeah. be upset that you're continually manifesting because there's something that the lord is bringing out of you and one of the yeah. things that the lord wrote to me about the process of deliverance is that he's he, he's bringing he's humbling a lot lot of people through the process so they can realize how bad they have lived in their past you know if you live like hell your whole life in the past don't expect yeah. that your deliverance is going to be boom it can be like that mm -hmm. but sometimes most times it's going to be vigorous like you know in africa it's legit yeah. like real things going yeah. on right so yeah uh, it, it's it's not a joke so just the Lord, he told me that he's humbling a lot of people through the mm -hmm. process so they'll gain revelation. So they have the understanding of how bad it is to live in sin, you know, so they can begin to preach aloud about the, the occult yeah. and new age, things of that nature. 
Amen. I think um, those of you that are listening, you have got to want to be free. You yep. can't drink of the cup of devils and the Lord's table together at mm -hmm. the same time. And so, you know, demons, I mean, we could really go on for like a series about this together, but um, I know you'll agree with me, prophet, but demons are strengthened by your in entertaining their engagement in your life. Yes. They're, they're strengthened each yeah. time you, you yield to the sin, each yeah. time you yield to the temptation. And God forbid you be shedding blood or, or yeah. something like that. They're really strengthened by that. And so you can't be participating. You, know, you can't constantly come be like, I want to be free, but you're still participating in it. Yeah. You have to be willing. Yeah. You know, Acts chapter 19 tells us about the revival that broke out in Ephesus. What a lot of believers, a lot of Christians don't understand is when Paul went to Ephesus, when he went to Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, Ephesus at that time was the center of witchcraft in the known world. At that time, archaeologists do archaeolog archaeological digs have found that in Ephesus, um, there were there were scrolls that were uncovered. There were potions that were uncovered, different incantations that have been uncovered in archaeological scrolls. And through the writings of extra biblical texts by people that lived in those days, they tell of people that were coming from the east and were traveling to Ephesus to learn the dark arts. Wow. So Ephesus was was a was a center, a school of witchcraft training, if you will. Mm -hmm. So when Paul went there, he went to a city that was given totally over to demon power. I mean, it had the temple of Artemis or the temple of Diana stood in Ephesus. And that was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. I believe it took over 200 years to build that temple. And it stood as higher than the Greek Parthenon. That's how large it was. So this, this was a city that was sacrificing children, um, shedding blood, committing sexual immorality, in the name of demon power he goes there preaches revival breaks out finally in that city so great that in chapter 19 we find out the bible tells us and the word of god grew mighty and prevailed in ephesus and it says and the people that believed brought their curious arts and they burned them yep. and and it, we assume that the people that brought the books when you don't really read that text the proper way with the 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 way that the Greek actually lays it out, we assume that the people that brought the curious arts were the unbelievers, but they weren't. That text actually reads that the people who brought the curious arts in the books were believers who had been dabbling in both, and revival broke out finally that they realized they could not eat at the Lord's table and the enemy's table at the same time. So they brought them, and they burned them, and that's when real revival broke out. When they got the mixture out of their house. So if you're listening and you've got anything in your home, you know, I couldn't go through the entire list of everything possible. But if you've got things in your home that have been devoted to dark, to the dark realm, you know, you've got things in your home that that glorify the occult. You've got whether they're books or they're movies or they're uh, things given to you by a family member who's involved in Freemasonry. You know, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> and or you know or um you know prophet help me out with some things that i'm not even thinking of that they might have in their home right now that they need to 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 pray ask god to reveal to them and get them out yeah 100 some of the things you listed already we we're talking about you know any type of statue an idol a figure buddha because yeah. a lot of people have buddha in their home That's we're right. talking about you know dream, cast, dream catchers crystals uh mm -hmm. the burning sage Anything that you believe that has a spiritual power, you gotta let it go. You gotta look at the jewelry that you have. You gotta look yeah. at the portraits in your home, the picture frames in your home, because there are a lot of objects that you can also receive from family members that have witchcraft on it, spirits mm -hmm. on it. And these things have, as long as it's in your home, you will have insomnia, you will have oppression as you sleep, you will have paranormal, paranormal activity, things moving. Yeah in your home these things gotta uh, break down in the name of jesus so anything you see in your home that is unusual where it's mystical spiritual you gotta let those things go me and my wife actually we uh walked past the mystical store and uh, they had a huge storefront and um you can see through the glass window and we begin to see all these items just full of witchcraft 
And it yeah. just reminded me of how so much people in their homes, they have all these mystical things and they think it's just beautiful. They think it's art, mm -hmm. they think it's antiques, they think it's all these things when the whole time it has a spirit on it. We got to yeah. understand that the Bible says that the prince of God, you know, was upon the tabernacle, an actual object, right? In the same way, demon mm -hmm. powers and spirits can also rest on objects as well. Whatever you yeah. glorify or believe uh, has a power or spiritual power, it invites demons. Whatever object that you say has power, you invite demons to now oppress, not oppress, but possess that object yeah. and ultimately be an altar in your home, which will bring a lot of witchcraft and problems in your life. You know, another thing that I come in contact with when I talk about this and I share these things, and when we get around the Halloween, especially, mm -hmm. you know, I get all these backslidden carnal Christians start manifesting on me and, <laughs> and, and they're like, Oh, you know, you know, it's just Halloween. We don't mean it that way. Listen, the, first off, the devil doesn't care if you mean it that way. Mm, he don't question. play by your set of, set of mm. rules. And he doesn't care if you mean it that way or don't mean it that way. He just cares that you open up the window and let him in. Okay. That's all he cares. And so um, when you bring these things and you entertain these kind of activities um, into your, I mean, listen. I see Christians with jack-o'-lanterns mm. and, and they're like, well, you know, I've had jack-o'-lanterns my whole life. I haven't had any problems. Well, praise God you haven't, but that doesn't mean that it's not demonic and not um, able to open a door up to you. I mean, people don't even understand the history of things like jack-o'-lanterns and some of the things attached to Halloween, but a jack-o'-lantern was carved out. It was a, was an image and a pumpkin that was carved out and, and they would put a fire or a candle inside of it in an attempt to try to ward off evil spirits, to keep them from coming to their house on that particular night. Well, you don't need that to ward off evil spirits. You just need the presence mm -hmm. of God, the power of God. And so, you know, stop dabbling in all of that garbage. Stop dabbling in all of that stuff. You want to either you want to be free or you don't want to be free. And, you know, I was ministering one time prophet to a, a young lady from Afghanistan, and she had she was living in the United States, and she had heard about some of the miracles and some of the things that God had done in our crusades. And my father-in-law had a business, and he was uh, put he he had an alarm business and was like putting an alarm in her home and 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 cameras and stuff like that. And she was a wealthy lady and did a lot of NGO work in Afghanistan um, to help women escape the Taliban and things like that. And so she needed some security and things like that in her home. So he was putting some systems in her house. And he's just, um, he finds out she's from Afghanistan. He goes, oh, you know, my son-in-law, you know, he travels to Pakistan and all these different places and, you know, preaching. And he doesn't really have any rapport with her. So he's just like kind of talking about a similar type subject when he really finds out where she's from. Oh, my son-in-law has been over to that part of the world. And he, he starts sharing with her the power of God and how the blind have saw and, 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 and what the Lord has done for people. And it, it piques her curiosity. She says, well, I'd like to meet your son-in-law. So he, he reaches out to me and says, hey, this lady would like to meet, meet with you, wants you to come to her house and have lunch. I said, well, I'll come and have lunch, but I got to bring my wife with me. You know, I'm not just going to show up at some lady's house for lunch. So me and my wife, we go, we sit down and um, we sit down and we're having, we're having lunch. She has a beautiful lunch prepared for us, you know, Afghani food and, and all this stuff. And so we're eating. And she says, I need to tell you my story. She said that my, she goes, my husband uh, was doing work for like the United Nations and he went to Haiti. And while he was in Haiti, he had an affair and he was having an affair with a woman that was involved in voodoo. And all of a sudden, when I found out about it, I confronted him. He got very angry. I started getting sick mysteriously. And, and she goes, I've been to all these doctors and they couldn't cure me and I didn't know what to do. And she said, I grew up a Christian, she said, but um, I escaped the Taliban at the age of 12, came to the West, and I backslid and turned my, you know, ran from, ran from God, turned away from Christ and lived a secular life. She goes, my husband starts having this affair with a woman in voodoo, and I start getting sick mysteriously. Things start happening to me, and she goes, um, I can't get well. I've been to doctors, and I went to a Ricky practitioner 
and I, I laid there on that table and they were doing their, their, their procedure. And, and, um, for those that don't understand what, uh, what that is, it's an Eastern mysticism, mystic practice. Um, it comes from the Eastern world and it's very demonic. Yeah. Uh, you'll see those massage type massage parlors all over the country here. They're especially in more fluent areas there. It's gaining, um, momentum as a, a woke way to be affluent and in touch with cultures from around the world. And so they'll go, these women will go and they'll have these things done and they're just entertaining demons. And she said, I was laying there on the, on the mat while they were, um, they had the candles lit and doing the things that they do in there. And she said, I felt this presence by my ear and it sounded like bees buzzing in the room. She goes, but I knew there weren't bees in the room, but I felt these bees outside of my ear. And she goes, I know you probably think I'm crazy. I said, ma'am, I don't think you're crazy. I think you've got a demon and I think yep. you're bound. And Jesus sent me here to set you free. I said, so mm -hmm. as soon as I finish my lunch, I'm going to set you free. <laughs> and so we sat there and she, she shared that with me. I ministered to her. She tears break out in her face. She repents. She comes to the Lord and Jesus sets her free right there at the table. Wow. But she had opened up that door. By and you know her husband um, involved with with witchcraft, uh, you know brings the calamity on her life. You know the, the the lady is, you know, doing curse and things like that on her, but then she makes it worse by going and seeking the devil, trying to get deliverance from this thing. And many times it's important for those that are listening: don't seek help from the underworld. The mm -hmm. devil he masquerades as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. and just because it, it looks good, looks clean, looks normal. You know, we don't have time on this podcast to talk about the different types of witchcraft. You know, they got white magic and black magic and red magic, all this other stuff, you know, and don't, don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. You know, seek the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. His power is available to set you free. Prophet, I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, as we get ready to close um, on the podcast today, for those that are listening, um, I want to ask you to pray for those for those that are on on the podcast, either going to watch the the replay on YouTube or going to listen on on the audio version. Those that might be listening that are struggling, you know, they've got a, maybe their children are afflicted, uh, maybe their maybe themselves or whatever they've got going on, just just pray for the people like you feel the Lord leading you. And I believe people are going to get deliverance and set free even now as the man of God prays. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. It'll be a pleasure Hallelujah. to pray. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. Your word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, there is liberty. So Lord, I pray for every listener, every viewer right now. We command every stronghold, every demon power yes. to leave their body in the name of Jesus, Lord. Every yes. soul tie and every spirit that has come from the marine kingdom or sexual intercourse, God, we command it. Jesus. to be broken now in the name of Jesus. Every ancestral demon, Father God, from practices and, and, and traditions, Father God, that have come from Africa, we command it to be broken in the name of Jesus. Every person listening to me, God, has received demonic impartation from vessels who are perverted, from vessels who have inquired of witchcraft for power. We break it now by the spirit of the living God. And we command every spirit, every marine spirit to let go of your people now in the name of Jesus. We command every marine spirit to let to come out of your body by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. We command everything from your core, everything that is oppressing you, everything that's holding your finances, coming against your mind, everything that's demonizing your children from movies, from music. We command it out by the Spirit of the Living God in the name of Jesus. The Bible declares, "Who the Son sets free, it's free indeed." So I proclaim freedom in your body now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. For those that are out there listening, this is Prophet Abednego Lufield on the Voice of Revival podcast this week. Make sure you reach out to his ministry at AbednegoLufieldMinistries.com. Check him out on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. You will be blessed. Listen, if you receive prayer on this broadcast and you felt the power of God touch you, you need you you receive deliverance and you're believing god in your life reach out to us let us know 
how the Lord touched you. You can always reach out to us at RevivalFireWM.com. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. This is the voice of Revival, the place where miracles still happen. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.